Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, and today we're gonna bring you a adventure video and a tools that don't suck video all together in one. So, Mike and Andrew are headed over to Circle M Ranch Speedway to film the nostalgic uh, dirt races that they're doing this weekend. And while they're doing that, I'm gonna go hunt for some old Ford parts and most importantly, pick up a really neat old tool that I scored that uh, is gonna be a huge help to the shop. So. I'm gonna jump in the truck. My buddy Rob offered to give me a hand and we're gonna run to Maryland to pick up a tool, show you guys the process and then unload it in the shop, find a home for it and show you guys how it works. So let's get going. It looks like it has a property of tag. Yeah. Right here. Do not remove this. Property of USA. Yep, there you go. Got it from the proving ground. <laughs> yeah, so it got pulled out. It got snuck out of the proving ground probably. And we're lucky enough, we showed up. And there is a chain fall, a motorized one, right here. We got a little handle. So we can slide this guy over. Try not to hit Rob in the head. Use the sling that was already on the wall. Here's another one. Good the lift. You couldn't get a bit on this thing, huh? Let's go over right now, so I see what else we got to do. <laughs> oh, I might be interested. I guarantee you, if it's cheap, I might be interested. I use this. <laughs> I mean, you already found a sucker. You guys are ready to empty my pockets.
quarter, seven eighths, one inch. <laughs> and you need to come down a little, don't you? That's that's the monster. That's that was the biggest. Oh yeah, we need to be the biggest. What's oh inch and a quarter is the biggest. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Eighth inch plate, first try. Let's see what it does. Hold on. We may want to clamp this thing. Hmm. All right, let's try one. Let's try half inch. <laughs> it wanted to do it. It was starting to go. Yeah, it was. Try number two. Half inch hole. Oh, let's breathe it. Like butter. Must have done it. Oh my god. Freaking perfect. Little burrs out of that. Barely burrs. Yeah, look at that. Let's see if I can see it. Straight off, first first punch. Eighth inch, half inch hole. Like nothing. Alright, let's see what's in the drawers. Ton of tape measures. Ten foot, sixteen foot, twenty-five foot, <laughs> twenty-five foot, sixteen foot. Uh, unknown, but taped together. That's actually pretty smooth. Hammer. hammer. Ooh, good pair of ice grips. A good pair or a pair. <laughs> The, a usable pair. Damn, look at that. Ah. It's nice. That is actually pretty Combination nice. Combination square. Wow. If it works. Ah. This is the mother load. Ah. $25 table with like 200 hours worth of stuff inside. It's got like a grinding pieces. What do you need here, Rob? I'm looking for a few of those thicker, wider stones. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, a lot. Tons of grinding stones. Man. Like look at these freaking things. Yeah, those are probably going in the trash. Soapstones? Soapstones are up, but I think I'm good on a soapstone. Yeah, but they're good. Pull uh, this whole thing. Wouldn't it be great if you had like $100 bills stashed under here you hit That'd from the nice. wife? Come on. No. I, I have to take one of those. Yeah, I, I, I'd hook you up. I'd give you a thousand out of the ten thousand. That's generous. It is. Nice That's guy. very generous. You would definitely go on another adventure then. Yeah, you're like, yeah, you know what? I can do this every once in a while. <laughs> It'd be disappointing that the rest of your life that it's just never happened again. Oh wow. This is super cool. Let's see if I can get on camera. The weld fillet gauge. Tells you all the different you don't have one of them. I don't think you run into uh, fillets that wide, though. <laughs> Jeez. I three quarter inch hole. See if you can snap it. Well, smash in my hand. There it goes. Helps if you bolt it to the table. Yeah. I know, not that exciting. <laughs> like, ooh, it cuts a hole. I know. The force that it takes to cut a hole, though. Oh, yeah, but this is bolted down. Oh, hell yeah. I gotta try a hole. I'm gonna try a smaller yeah. one that I can try easily. 
Let's see this here. Goes that way, I guess. What is G? I can't read what G is, but I'll read it is to G. Half inch? I'm going to go smaller than that. Let's go to quarter inch. That's E. It's dated 1959. It came off a military base or something. It's property of USA. Do not remove this tag. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Man, that's killer. Show the camera. Oh, shit. The camera was on. That's all right. Nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm going a little overboard here with some of these cuts, but... Alright, so uh, we got the punch home, got the table home. Everything got off the table uh, or off the truck really easily using the chain hoist and we're all on the ground and uh, safe and sound. So, for right now I have the punch just sitting here on the workbench because I really need to make a uh, dedicated pedestal for the uh, the Rotex punch here. I don't want to take up a whole entire bench and this bench is a mobile rolling bench so I don't want to put a ton of weight on it that I have to push around all the time so uh, I'm gonna leave it here for now but what I'm gonna do is uh, we might go to my favorite scrap metal yard see if I can find a, uh, a vintage cast iron base if not maybe there's something that's already fabricated or worst case scenario I'll just buy some raw materials there and we'll make a little base for this uh, this came with a real thick piece of metal, a uh, piece of plate that it was bolted to, and then it was bolted down to a wood table. I left the wood table there because I didn't really have any interest in it, um, but I did grab the uh, metal plate. It's something like a half inch plate or something like that. So putting that down on top of the bench that I make, it should be just fine. I'm going to anchor it into the into the concrete and the floor, and uh, should should work out pretty well. But the way this works is really simple. We greased and uh, lubed everything up. Uh, used a bunch of foil to kind of get everything freed up. I don't think this thing's been used in quite a while. Uh, the um, auctioneer was kind of saying that uh, the guy's stuff that it was, he did work on a military base at some time. Uh, this does have a U.S. Air Force uh, property of tag on the side. Uh, data manufacturer is 1959, which is pretty cool. Uh, so. It may have come off the base when he worked there. Could have been something he bought for surplus or, you know, maybe at an auction, a surplus auction, who knows. But uh, it works really well now. Uh, we were able to punch basically almost up to capacity with it uh, without too much trouble. Now, I had to have Rob to help me hold the back down because we didn't have it bolted down. We were just impatient. I wanted to use it. So he held the back down we, and we, uh, we punched some holes in it. So uh, once this thing's bolted down, it should work really really well but uh, now that everything's freed up it's got this uh, heavy spring on the side for this handle that actually uh, pulls a lever that goes down through uh, both of these turret sections so the top is your actual punch so we can now rotate this guy around here and uh, spins nice and free when we got it it was like really difficult to spin but after we cleaned it and lubed it, it spins really nice uh, it has letters on here that correspond to letters and sizes that's on the bottom. And when you have this same lever pushed up, we can turn the bottom one. And this one's still got a little bit of gunk in it, so it doesn't turn as nice as the top. But I'm sure after I spray it and clean it a bunch, it will, uh, it will free up. Same thing when we first started messing with it, you could barely turn this table. So this is progress. Um, but overall, I'm happy with it. And uh, we can lock, lock everything in place like so and you're ready to punch so they fabricated a handle on it this isn't the original handle but they made a nice handle for it all I'm gonna do is probably just round the edges a little bit and uh, continue to use it as is so I'm really happy with this I've been wanting one of these for a really long time uh, the fact that I can do heavy plate on this uh, I think the thickest let's check here. so quarter inch thick. This thing could do quarter inch thick plate down to um, our small our smallest hole on this is an eighth inch hole and it could do up to quarter inch thick uh, with an eighth inch hole which is pretty awesome. Then it goes to three sixteenths about halfway up and then finally the largest hole at the end 
is an inch and then an inch and a quarter and it says that it'll do that in eighth inch. We tried to do inch and a quarter, um, an inch and a quarter diameter punch with the eighth inch on our first try. Uh, it kind of just formed it, didn't really quite rip the metal through, as you can maybe see here. Didn't quite get it, almost got it through. Uh, that might have just been because it wasn't bolted down, I wasn't able to give a nice smooth pull with it and we were kind of like, I don't know, bounce it on it, but I, it was almost through cutting. So that's pretty amazing that you could cut nice holes like that. It cut the one inch holes without uh, too much too much problem. So I'm really happy with it. Once I get this on a bench, we'll do a video ma making a little bench for it and putting it in, the, uh, in a, its new home in the shop. And uh, also I got all these goodies that were in the drawer. Some of the stuff's junk, some of it's good. I got a ton of tape measures, but I got some good stuff that I needed, like, uh, where the heck's it at? Oh, here. My, my automatic center punch has been dying, and for any of the guys that come over here to lend me a hand or, or work in the shop with me on Sunday service, the center punch is one of those things that works sometimes, sometimes it doesn't, you're banging on the table to get it to work again because it gets sticky. This is one of these spring-loaded ones that's really nice. This doesn't go bad. So you can just stick it down pull it and springs back and makes a nice center punch in metal. So that was something I've been meaning to buy. Don't have to buy anymore. On top of all the other stuff that I got, grinding discs, everything else, this was well worth it. Uh, I spent $400 on the Rotex punch, uh, which I've seen these go for, I don't know, a, a good deal is like $900 or $1,000, but I see them going in the upwards of $2,500 to $3,000, some guys are asking, and up, depending on the size of them. Uh, so I'd say that 400 bucks is a pretty good deal. The table, when I was there, uh, I paid $25 for the table. We were uh, loaded this up and went in to pay, and basically the, uh, the auctioneer, I said to the auctioneer, man, this is a nice welding table. He said, you want it? Nobody bid on it. I'm like, okay, what do you want for it? And I just basically offered him 25 bucks, and he didn't even counter and said the family would be happy to see it gone. So uh, it just goes to show sometimes when you go to places, even though you're picking up one thing, Always, always, just make conversation, ask about stuff that's still around there. You never know, you might get something that's a really good deal and uh, you might make out pretty well. So that's all I have for this one. This is our kind of quick a mix of tools that don't suck and an adventure video all in one. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Got another tool that's gonna outlive me that will make my life a lot easier and got a workbench that we can work on. We can always use another work surface. So that's all I have for this one. I appreciate you guys following along. As always, we do videos on Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. If you haven't, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And all we ever ask is just uh, share it with some friends if you enjoy the videos that we have. Thanks, guys. Catch you later.